Good morning. We started off our final full day in Hong Kong with a bakery breakfast. It cost 31 Hong Kong dollars for those four items that you saw in our previous shots, which makes it somewhere between five and six dollars Canadian. Definitely the cheapest meal we've had so far here. This morning, or should I say, yeah, still this morning. Just. We are heading off to Poland Monastery, which is located on Lantau Island. Now, it's going to take us nearly two hours to get there, so I'm hoping that I'm not dragging Nick off to something that doesn't end up being worthwhile. I guess let's find out. number 23 to take us to Poland Monastery and the Big Buddha and it's been super closely signposted so we're hoping that we can pay on the bus because we don't have a ticket. Let's see what happens. Forty Hong Kong dollars later and we are on the bus. And just like that we have arrived to Nyongping village I think it's cool, but that's not the main reason why we're here. So the main reason is that we are going to Po Lin Monastery, the entrance to which is just over there. But we are also able to get our first sneak preview, as are you, of the big Buddha statue for which this entire part of Lantau Island is famous. The bus ride up was gorgeous. I feel like we got a tour of the entire island because the cable car wasn't working. So that's kind of, you know, an added benefit. Yeah, solid bonus. Yeah, it was really pretty. It's all hilly and the hills are covered in just such lush greenery. And I don't know why, but it totally reminded me of landscape from Jurassic Park. to Poland Monastery and it is a Buddhist monastery that was founded in 1906. just had a look inside the main temple you can see that there's three bronze buddha statues and apparently they represent buddha's past present and future lives so that's pretty cool up the entrance to the Great Hall of 10,000 Buddhas. The last time we saw something like this was when we were in Malaysia at Penang Hill and it's just as impressive. So you have five main statues as part of an altar setting but then where the rest of the many thousand Buddhas comes in is actually all adorning the walls. They're no more than a few inches tall but they're all completely tessellated to make up basically almost like a wallpaper. It's 
incredible. I just think this whole monastery is absolutely gorgeous. Again, the colors are so vibrant, like these blues and greens, gold. But instead of it being red, it's more of a maroon color here. And then, of course, the walls are just adorned not only with Buddhas, but also with dragons and all kinds of like forms, whether it's just a dragon head or the full dragon body. Absolutely stunning carvings on the outside of these buildings. I think what strikes me alongside the buildings in this area just being so beautiful is also just the setting as well. It's interesting because in a lot of instances with religious temples and things like that, especially in this part of the world, they all seem to be in just the most spectacular settings. And this is no different. You just have like on one side nothing but mountains and then on the other side it then slopes down all the way down to the coast and it's all just nestled in around beautiful natural vegetation and it's just a lovely place to be. multiple stair climb up to what one would consider to be the main event which is the big Buddha. So this is a 34 meter aka 113 foot bronze statue of Buddha that was erected back in 1993. It's kind of rare to see a Buddha statue that's younger than me but it's pretty impressive and the views from around here are amazing. all free. But the journey definitely wasn't. In order to get here, obviously, as we've mentioned, it did take a while. But in terms of the overall cost for the two of us, then the subway was, what, 41 Hong Kong dollars? And then the bus was an additional 40 Hong Kong dollars. So we're talking 80 in total, which is, which is about $15 in total just to journey out here. We're not sure if the 40 Hong Kong dollars for the bus is a return trip. Exactly. TBD. Yep. But if it ends up proving that that's all single trips, then it does amount to a pretty expensive day of $30 just getting transportation. But I think it's worth it because first of all, this is a gorgeous Buddhist temple. The setting of it is so peaceful in that you see all of these mountains surrounding the temple. You also see something that is like totally iconic in the Big Buddha. And it just seems more secluded and less touristy, although there are still a ton of tourists here, than the rest of Hong Kong. I think the great thing is this is definitely one of the better ways to see more of Hong Kong beyond just Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. Obviously we didn't get to see the cable car, I'm sure that there would have been an amazing 360 panoramic view of the surrounding area, but even if you got the bus you would still be treated to more or less the same kind of thing. And especially when you do get up here then all of the scenery that you see here is just incredible. So all in all, good call. 100% worth it. Mm -hmm. Now time to head back. Turns out that the $40 we'd originally paid was not a return ticket, it was just a single fare. So yep, that's 80 Hong Kong dollars there and back from the nearest subway station. Just for the bus to get us to the monastery. Just for that. And then on top of that, we're going to have to pay another $41 on subway fares to then get back to IMP. Another thing to note though, and this is something that we did slip up on unfortunately, is that they only accept exact change. So if you do not have that, then you have to basically find a way to obtain it, otherwise you will not be allowed on this. So for us, we went to a 7-Eleven and bought a bottle of water, and that's how we were able to get 40 Hong Kong dollars to pay for the bus back. 
exactly. That is a top tip if you don't want to be overcharged for a bus to and from the nearest subway station from here. So we've just come back to do some rest and work. To and do some rest, I love it. To do the resting, we did the resting. We did, we did a lot of the resting, it was great. Not actually, we did more working. Yes, but while we were doing that I also did some research and uh, it turns out that the cable car would have cost 160 Hong Kong dollars per person. So considering the fact that that was basically the cost of our entire trip today, I feel like we dodged a financial bullet. I'm sure we would have had incredible views, but because we are backpackers, this was a bit of a blessing in disguise. And I still feel like we got to see quite a bit of the island on the bus anyway. Absolutely. We did have exciting plans for tonight. We are going to go out for dim sum. And you probably should go out for dim sum if you come to Hong Kong. But I don't know if you can still hear my voice is not normal. My throat has been sore ever since like our last day in South Korea and it actually got worse after that. Just been hacking up a lung basically. Like the cough is no joke and I feel like I push myself during the day but the mornings and the evenings are definitely worse and I'm just out of energy for today. So with that then we're gonna call it here so that we can continue with the resting and yeah just have a Nice quiet night in, in the hopes that this will help Rachel's recovery. This was our last day in Hong Kong and it's been a bit of a whirlwind. It's been a bit more expensive than even I anticipated, but it's been great. I think it's as pricey as I expected it to be, but I think we've done a really good job of budgeting. Mm. I don't think we've actually paid for anything that we've seen. No, that's We've true. paid for food and public transportation. And accommodation is obviously the real kicker because to be honest with you, like it's not like public transportation or food are outrageously expensive. I think they're cheaper than they are in Toronto. It's just that the, it's just that we do have a limited budget where we like to stick to a hundred dollars a day total. And our accommodation I think is like $87 a day here. And as you will have seen in another video, like we're living in a shoebox, a very nice clean shoebox, a safe shoebox. It's a lovely shoebox. The loaf the shoebox is in a great location, Yeah, but $13 a day for two people doesn't leave much. No. And so that's why we've just been here for a limited amount of time, but I thought it was great. I think yeah. it's beautiful here. It's great. It's very mountainous, it's green, and yet you're in this like urban city. The water's so blue, like I had a great time. Yeah, and I think probably the greatest thing is like we ended up getting a few recommendations as Rachel's mentioned in previous videos from your friend's cousin. Mm -hmm. And pretty much each and every single one of them has been an utter knockout. Like there are clearly so many good eateries around here. And yeah, pretty much everything we've eaten since we got here has been second to none. So all in all, it has been a really, really good experience. Again, this may just be somewhere we end up coming back to with a bit more budget so we can perhaps enjoy a different side to the city. But uh, yeah, we'll look forward to heading on to our next country tomorrow. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling. Good morning. We have started off we have started our last full day in Hong Kong off with a cheap but delicious bakery. Bakery breakfast. <laughs>